Good evening, everybody, uh, members of the community, uh, councillors. We've got a representative from the Metropolitan Transport Forum, uh, shy officers, uh, and our candidates. Thanks for coming down to this important forum tonight about, obviously, public transport on our Great Peninsula, our, with a particular focus tonight, obviously, in the seat of Hastings. Uh, before I get started, I'd just like to acknowledge the Bunurong people who have been the tradition, cu traditional custodians of these lands for many thousands of years and pay respects to their elders past and present. Uh, we also acknowledge that the Bunurong uh, people's living, uh, sorry, culture has played a unique role in the life of this region and um, pay respects to them. So before I get started, I will just uh, let everyone know who's here tonight. So we've obviously got uh, three candidates in front of us um, that are all candidates in the Hastings seat. So we've got Mr Paul Mercurio, the Labor candidate, uh, for Hastings. We've got Ms Bryony Hutton, the Liberal candidate for Hastings, and Mr Paul Saunders, uh, the Greens candidate for Hastings. Um, it's going to be interesting. Two Pauls. I was going to go with first names, but it might get a bit tricky, so we'll see how we go. We'll call you Merck, okay? So we'll call Merck, Bryony, Paul. Is everyone happy with that? Thank you. And we've also got several candidates in the audience tonight. Um, unfortunately, the format of the panel makes it uh, a bit tricky to manage too many, but so we do have the three that got in first and we do have some others in the audience and they'll have an opportunity to ask a question or two later tonight. But we do have Harry, Sin Sorry, Harry Sinclair, the Greens candidate from Mornington. Harry, can you pop? Yep. Thank you. And I'll get you to pop, pop up your hand so everyone can see. Robert Whitehill, the Independent for Hastings. G'day, Robert. Uh, Elizabeth Woolcock, the Independent for Nepean. Thanks, Elizabeth. And David Burgess, who's the Liberal candidate for the Eastern Region in the Upper House. Where are you, David? There you go. Uh, so thanks, everyone, for, for making the effort to come down tonight. Um, so tonight's obviously a great opportunity to hear from the candidates about their views on public transport and to ask them a few questions after they do their, their own introductions and then the audience will have an opportunity to do a bit of a Q&A. Uh, there are... A couple of rules, not many, but a couple of rules tonight. The questions need to be transport related, obviously. We're here for transport, so we're not, we're not interested in whatever uh, other things you want to talk to us about. Just transport, please. And that's, that goes with the questions as well. Um, so question, question is we'll have, when we get to the Q&A session, I'll remind everyone when we get there, they'll have one minute to ask a question. Uh, obviously, that's quite a long question, but you can give a little bit of context, but make sure you get to a direct question at the end and you can use that time to add a bit of context if you need to. Um, and preferably, um, if you can, keep it relevant to the local area because obviously we're hearing about local uh, solutions to local problems. Uh, and then finally, obviously, um, I'll, I'll go around the room, try to give everyone an opportunity, and then um, when we finish, the candidates will all get an opportunity to close, so they'll get two minutes to close. So I didn't say six minutes to open, Q&A, then two minutes to close. Um, this, this forum is put on... So we're a host. I'm very grateful to be the host... Uh, of this particular one in City Hastings, but it is a Metropolitan Transport Forum initiative, so thank you to the team for allowing us to host tonight. Um, and I think this is, as I said, it's a great opportunity where, where tonight, I think you've already had a couple of forums around the, the state and then there's a few more after this. And uh, before I get into it, I just wanted to talk about, I've just noticed we've had two other candidates walk in, so I'll just quickly introduce those. We've got Chris Cruther, the Liberal candidate for Mornington, and Kate Lardner, uh, the independent candidate for Mornington as well. Oh, sorry, what's your name, sorry? Okay, thank you, Esther. Greens candidate for Nepean, lovely to meet you. And another one, they're all... Oh, Georgia. Georgia Fowler, Labor candidate for Mornington. So we've got a, a, a great uh, audience in the room. <laughs> Renee Heath, Eastern Victoria Liberal candidate. G'day, Renee. Okay, I think we're there. Hopefully no more. Shut the doors. Um, <laughs> And before I move on, I just wanted to, again, also let you know we've got uh, several councillors in the room. I can't see them all, but uh, I'm obviously the Mayor, Anthony Marsh. We've got Lisa Dixon, the Deputy Mayor. Where are you, Lisa? There you are. Hand up. Uh, David Gill, Councillor for Red Hill. How are David? Uh, Sarah Race. Thank you, Sarah. Councillor for Nepean. And Despi O'Connor, Councillor for Briars Ward. Have I missed anyone? Nope. Yeah, where's all the current politicians? Where's the federal member? Thanks, Mr. Crump. Well, thanks, Mr. Crump. Uh, Thank you, everyone. So again, um, I will ask when the candidates are speaking that the audience please um, let them and give them an opportunity to speak, no interruptions. Uh, but before we kick off to the introductions of the candidates, I will just talk a bit about the problems that we have on the peninsula specifically. And I'll start with my journey tonight because I thought, I'm going to catch a bus to the, the uh, forum. And that was a pretty interesting experience. So I live in Mount Martha, which is by car 17 minutes away. And it took me two hours to get here. I'm half drenched, half sweaty and a bit bothered, but uh, 
interestingly, the bus, so I caught a bus from Mount Martha to Frankston, which most people know is not that difficult. It's um, about 40 minutes instead of 20 minutes by car. Then you change and then caught one down from, uh, from Frankston to, to Hastings. But the, I live in an arterial. The bus stop's only 50 metres, about 50 metres from my front door. But the timetable, if I left by 3.30, there was no way that I could catch a bus from Mount Martha to Hastings to get here by quarter past six. That's ridiculous. So I walked 20 metres to a different arterial where there was a better route. I managed to get a bus, but it still took me an hour and 52 minutes to get here. Um, interestingly, I got motion sickness and I feel pretty horrible at the moment, but I'll survive. Um, but it was all part of the experience. And I think, you know, when we talk about these issues, and I'd really encourage the candidates to give that a crack, because I'm assuming you all drove here. Yep. Yeah. So, so I think, uh, you know, living the experience is puts you in a bit more bit more of a, uh, an informed mindset to, to make decisions or to talk about these issues. So I just want to do that myself and uh, I won't be catching the bus here anytime soon until we fix those solutions. So I'll be very interested to hear what the politicians are offering us tonight or the candidates, what they're offering us tonight. Because if you think of that, that's, um, that's a four hour return trip. So if you're trying to catch a bus from Mornington, a major activity centre on the peninsula, to Hastings, another major activity centre on the peninsula, it's a four hour return trip to get to work, maybe an eight hour shift. And that's... Um, that's just an unacceptable outcome at the moment. It'll correct you. You won't be able to get home yeah. And that's the problem. I won't be able to get home tonight, so I have already organised a lift. Um, but it just, it's, a, it's a really kind of gimmicky but simple way to illustrate the problem. So, um, yeah, just wanted to leave you with that. Um, but obviously, the Mornington Peninsula, I don't have the stats in front of me because I was a bit underprepared because I thought I was going to do it on the bus but then got sick. Um, but basically, I think 82% of our population isn't serviced by public transport. Um, we've obviously got a pretty decent link, although it takes a while. I think it's 130-odd stops from Frankston to Sorrento. But there is a decent link on the Southern Peninsula side, the Port Phillip side. But getting across Peninsula, particularly into um, you know, the Red Hill Ward, which is 50% of our peninsula, and, and definitely connecting Hastings to the rest, rest of the peninsula, we're missing that link. And, and that's a huge problem. We've got plenty of people begging for work in one part and plenty of people looking for employees in another, but we can't connect the two. So transport is a solution to a lot of our other problems that we experience down here. Um, so that's just a bit of an intro. Uh, we have done, obviously, plenty of surveys um, across the peninsula over the many years, and this is something that we constantly get asked to address. Uh, obviously, well, if it's not, it should be obvious. It's a state responsibility, so council's role is to advocate, and that's why we're here tonight, and my role is to to chair this, um, this forum in a very impartial way just to hear what all the candidates have to offer and then turn it over to you as the community to ask your questions about uh, you know, what solutions are being put forward. So with that, um, we've got to kick off to the speakers, but one thing I have to do is draw some cards to, to determine the order. And I said to uh, Greg from the MTF, we've got a big mirror behind me, so this could be a bit tricky, but <laughs> we've got three cards and I'll start with you, Merck. So if you take a card. Oh. You can turn them out. We don't need that much suspense. All right, so we have uh, Bryony, so Miss Hutton, the Liberal candidate for, uh, for Hastings to speak first, followed by uh, Paul from uh, the Greens candidate for Hastings, and then followed by Merrick, Paul McEarrow for Hastings. So, candidates, you've got the rules are you've got six minutes to speak, an introduction. Uh, we've got Greg over here from the MTF. He's going to ring a bell, one minute bell, so five minutes in, and then a two when you stop, and then I'll, uh, I'll cut you off there. Okay, thank you. I think we're on. Thank you, Anthony, for hosting this evening to the Morning to Peninsula Shire Council and also, of course, to Metropolitan Transport Forum, Greg Day and his team of, of helpers. It's great to be able to talk transport on the peninsula. So, of course, this is Hastings Electorate. We're talking about Balnarring right up to Langwarren, which is where the three of us are running. Um, I've spent my whole life here growing up in Tyab and currently living in Summers, where I've lived for 11 years. Um, I was a 17-year-old uni student on the 782 bus, uh, which came from... Uh, uh, summers right through to, uh, you know, Frankston Station, an hour and a half, and then, of course, um, the train and two tram connections later was a three-and-a-half-hour one-way journey to Deakin Burwood. Uh, but nevertheless, I was determined to get there, so get there I did, and then get my licence very quickly when I turned 18. I also did, and I'm sure uh, there are other people in the room who've had similar experiences. But as the Liberal candidate for Hastings, I'm committed to driving solutions. Um, that's why I was really thrilled to be able to bring the Leader of the Opposition down to Baxter on the weekend. Um, we announced that we will 
fund, the Frankston to Baxter Rail Extension is stage one of ultimately electrifying the rail line, not just from Frankston to Baxter, but to Stony Point uh, thereafter. So that's a $971 million project. Uh, we're committed to $746 million. So that's taking into account the current government, which was the Liberal former government's uh, $225 million commitment. Uh, we could have done it, in fact, in, in 2016. Uh, the only reason it hasn't gone ahead is because the current state government has never allocated funding to the project. If we win government, will deliver it. Uh, further to that, I'm working very hard to advocate for a cross-peninsula bus service. Um, Anthony, you mentioned your struggles uh, just moments ago trying to get from Mount Martha uh, to Hastings. I'm fighting uh, for a Hastings to Mornington bus service together with candidate for Mornington Chris Cruther in the audience um, and also for a Hastings to Rosebud bus service with uh, Liberal candidate for Nepi and Sam Groth. Uh, these are incredibly important projects, uh, not just to address things like workforce shortages, but it's unacceptable um, that we have young people, uh, perhaps people with a, a disability or simply, as I speak to a lot of residents, particularly around Crib Point, who don't have petrol money to get themselves even to Hastings. So we have a real need here. Uh, this should have been addressed decades ago, uh, but I'm committing to fighting s to solutions in my current capacity as the Liberal candidate. Uh, I know we also want to talk roads tonight, and I couldn't be happier to talk about roads because we have all seen um, the, the yellow spray-painted lines across craters in the road, which are a really good mark system, but perhaps not the best delivery system to addressing that spinal adjustment you get when you're going to work. Um, but the Liberals have committed $10 billion over 10 years for road maintenance right across Victoria, and that'll be a needs-based system, addressing not just uh, the physical uh, removal of, of uh, the cracks in the road that cause these systemic issues, and then resurfacing works, but also addressing contracting needs, because uh, we can always get more value for our money with these things, especially when you're dealing with multiple levels of government. Um, so I'm very much committed to improving our transport system. I've lived the issues as a local, I've worked on them uh, in my previous job as uh, CEO of Committee for Mornington Peninsula, together with the business uh, community here, um, and also uh, you know, in discussions with council about that. So very happy to take your questions as we move throughout the evening. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Sutton. OK, next up we have Paul Saunders, the Greens candidate for Hastings. Thanks, Paul. Go. Oh, yes, I've got it. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Well done. Coming out on a pretty foul night. And it's going to be worse tomorrow. Um, I am so pleased to see people interested in politics because it's a very important part of our life. So I'm, my name's Paul Saunders. Um, I live in Balnarring. I moved to Balnarring from the other side of the planet in 2003 with two little baby girls. Sadly, they went to school in, well, one of them went to school in Rosebud. She had a lot of friends on the wrong side of the peninsula for us, so I've driven thousands and thousands of kilometres ferrying those kids around because there is no public transport, realistically, on this side of the peninsula. Um, and I thought, how do I tackle this? Because I'm not in a position to promise you billions or thousands or millions of dollars of money. So I thought, let's have a look at what's been going on. So I did a bit of research into the history of public transport on the peninsula. And of course, one of the major issues of transport in Victoria. 1999, it was privatised. And for a good number of years, I, that was by our dear friend Jeff Kennett, I believe, um, there was quite a schmozzle there. And eventually the um, Labour Party came in and created the Metlink system to try and actually put something back together. Didn't work all that wonderfully. We're now apparently under the uh, guise of Public Transport Victoria. Sorry, we're not. We were in 20, April 2012, and now we've moved under the Department of Transport of the state government. And their primary function, I like this one, primary function is to plan, coordinate, provide, operate, and maintain a safe, punctual, reliable, clean public transport system. They don't tick some of those boxes for us down here. So I then thought, well, why is it like this? Lots of money goes into it. And so I looked in a little bit into who runs our system. So Metro Trains, interestingly, is 60% owned by a Hong Kong company, a state, a state organization. I'm not sure they're too, care, too fussed whether my kids get to a party on a Saturday night from Hong Kong. Our buses um, are 
Australian owned, but with a 15% um, venture capital London firm running them. So again, not much interest in our particular concerns. Um, and they're, both systems are on very nice lucrative 10-year contracts. So they're not going to do anything in a hurry to try and improve our, uh, our setup. And they're in competition. They're private entities. That's what Jeff Kennett gave us. Competition between different entities. So why, if you own a bus company, would you make, make it meet a train? Because people get on the train instead of on your bus. It's just a silly, silly system. And I've lived with it for years, as have you. So what do we do about this? Well, you've had promises for years. I've had promises for years. We're all going to spend loads and loads of money. Some money gets spent, but we don't fix the problem. Some very, very good ideas from, um, uh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name for a moment, Robert, who's here. Robert is a very keen person on putting forward ideas for our public transport. So if you get the chance, have a look at his designs. Very much cheaper than that proposed by the Liberals. I mean, a new car park in Baxter. We've had a suite of car parks that haven't happened. I'm wondering if we're going to have another one. There's other, that won't solve the problem. Robert's design is that we need more frequent transport and interconnected transport. So the critical thing for this side of the peninsula is the Stony Point line, and it has passing spaces. There's loads of space here in Hastings. There's quite a big space in Baxter. You put a loop in, you put more frequent trains on, people can start to use them. You contract with the buses and the trains that they talk to each other, that they meet. And you can actually use the thing and get around. You put some cross... Cross trains is a bit expensive, Robert. I know that's one of your nice ideas. Some hills in the way. But cross buses are very easy to put together. Coordinate it. Put it on an app. Get things moving. And private, uh, private um, companies won't fix it on their own. They get the nice big lucrative contracts and they compete with each other. So we need to do something quite differently. We either contract much more carefully, and it's very difficult when an awful lot of funding comes from those companies to the incumbent governments, which you might be interested in that one. If you look on the VEC website, you can see who's paying for these campaigns. Some interesting people. It's public knowledge. It's out there now, thanks to the Greens, who changed the uh, donation system at the, between the elections. So we can see who's paying for what, what their interests are. And I'm afraid it's not you and I getting around the peninsula, not in a car. There's lots of other things we can do. Again, integrate these together. The footpaths, Bryony mentioned the roads, the footpaths. So you can actually ride to the station. I used to try very hard, a bit like Anthony, wasn't quite as bad as yours, travelling into Melbourne, live in Balnaring, cycle to Bitten, get the train, I had to go very early because there's only one train, travel into central Melbourne, work for the day, come back. If I missed one train coming out of Melbourne, there wasn't another one back to Bitten. I had to phone someone to come and get me because they're not integrated. There's not enough trains on that line. That's about my six minutes. My suggestion is, and I'll round this up at the end, try something different, folks. The usual isn't working. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Paul. And now we'll go to the other Paul. Thanks, Paul McEwry. You've got that one there. No, I'm going to use this. I've got to stand up. Um, uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, ladies and gentlemen, candidates. Last. <laughs> now I've forgotten everything I've said listening to you guys. Um, look, I'm not uh, a career politician, so I'm not going to kind of do the, the poly speak. Um, I'm just a bloke from Tyab. I've lived in Tyab for about six and a half years. I catch the bus occasionally and get... Um, motion sickness on it, uh, and I catch the train when I can because I really love the train. Um, it's 2022 and our public transport is um, pretty bad. And <laughs> Thank you. And, um, and we need to do something about it, obviously, and that's, uh, that's what we're here for. And I think it's bad for a couple of reasons, and, and one of them is that for the last 16 years, we have had uh, a, uh, an MP that um, is from the Liberals and has been uh, in opposition for the last 12 years. And we all know that if your party doesn't win, it doesn't matter what you uh, promise, you're not going to get anything across the line. And so we need a change from the past 12 years. Another problem too, although I shouldn't really call it a problem, is we've had Labor for the last eight years. Now, the truth of the, thing, the, truth of the matter is they do stuff. 
You know, they're currently spending $90 billion on um, transport infrastructure. They're building railways, they're building stations, they're getting rid of uh, rail crossings. They're actually doing a lot of stuff, and no one can doubt that. They're just not doing it down here. And the reason for that is why I also bring up the fact that we've had a Liberal in opposition for so long is we don't have a voice at the table. And I think that that's what we need. We need someone at the table that can have the conversations and that can advocate for this electorate. And that's why I put my hand up to run, because I want to advocate and I want a seat at the table. Now, it's really interesting. I thought if I went first, I could say... We've all got very similar ideas, and we, we actually do. We want to fix the train line. We want to get the, the bus services more frequent. We want them running seven days a week. We don't want to have, you know, Sundays off. Uh, we want to cross bus service. But we're not going to get any of that unless we have someone that is advocating at the table for it. And as a case in point, when Chris Brain won the PN, what happened? He was at the table. He was advocating. He fixed or got better bus services. Um, over on his side in the pen. And so that's a, a very simple case in point on, on what we can do. As far as the train line goes, I don't believe um, electrification to Baxter actually benefits our community in any way whatsoever. Um, I know the Committee for Greater Frankston uh, and the council support going to Lang Warren, and the reason for that is if we've got it there in 15, 20, 25 years, we can take it to, to Hastings or even uh, down to Stony Point. So that's smart. But we have... A, f a fantastic train line already that goes from Frankston to Stony Point. And all we need to do is put some loops on it so trains can pass, and then we have the potential of a half-hour service. We start the service earlier in the morning, we have it um, going later at night, and all of a sudden we have a working service on a train line. I'd like also to advocate for a station at uh, the hospital. In fact, I've got an appointment tomorrow with my heart specialist, and if I could get, jump on the train, knowing I've had a, a, a calm journey, get off and go and see my doctor, that'd be fantastic. Um, I, it's going to be a terrible weather tomorrow, so I'm glad I'm not doing it. Um, it's a game changer to get this half-hour service. We have a housing issue on the peninsula. We don't have rentals, or we have very few. They're too expensive. People can't afford to buy houses. If we had a half-hour service, we can actually bring people, or people can come down here and work in this community, and when they finish work, they can get back on the train and go home. I've met so many people that say, I don't catch the train to work because I get there two hours too early, and then when I finish work, there's no train to take me home. So for me, um, <coughs> pardon me, loops on the train makes um, an enormous amount of sense, but we're only going to get them if we have someone that's at the table and is advocating for that. As I said about um, buses uh, cross, bus services. I do know that um, that Labor are working on um, an idea for cross bus services. It's yes, let's get it going. I might also go back and say in terms of what Labor is doing down here, we have Western Port Highway, we have Grant Road, we have Golf Links Road. So, you know, Labor is doing stuff in this area but not within the public transport. Um, I've spoken to um, John, the CEO, and I will be advocating to, uh, to uh, the Department of Transport. Every time we build a road, we should be building a bike path on it. What are we doing? If we're not doing that, we're never going to have bicycle paths around the peninsula. I c completely support um, the Baxter, sorry, the Somerville to Baxter um, bike path. Uh, as a member of council, I was able to actually get that across the line and, in fact, encourage council to take it from Baxter up to Golf Links Road. The reason I could do that is because I had a voice at the table. So I think we need change. If we want to make a change, we need a voice at the table. So I, I'm not going to make lots of promises, but I will make all of you one promise tonight. If Labor get in and if I win, I will be a voice at the table and I will advocate long, hard and loudly to make a change and to fix our public transport. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. So everyone, that concludes our introductions and thanks to all the candidates for that. Uh, obviously the introductions can go a little bit wider, um, but I will say we're now going to go to audience Q&A and I'll, I'll ask that the candidates speak very specifically to the question and obviously to the, the members of the audience. This is now your opportunity to uh, 
ask any question you want. Um, we do have a roaming mic, so if anyone has a question, put up your hand and we'll wait till the mic gets you because we do have people watching on remotely and obviously we want them to be able to hear the question as well. And as I said uh, in the introduction, we'll have a one minute um, time to ask a question. So that gives you obviously a bit of time to add some context, but try to keep it pretty specific because the candidates only have one minute to answer. So you can ask several questions uh, and we'll try to move around the room a bit. But um, yeah, if you can try to keep it somewhat specific, that'd be great. We've got someone up the front here. Oh, sorry, our first question from our candidate who unfortunately was just too late to make the panel. Uh, so we'll go to Robert. Mr. Robert Whitehill, you've got a question. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Um, all, your, all the ideas you've had so far are fantastic. They're very inspiring. But um, I kind of feel they're a little bit, with all due respect, short-term focused. My question is, what is your vision for the Mornington Peninsula's rail and bus networks in 2050? Who would like to take that one first? Paul? Paul Saunders? Greens candidate. Thank you, Paul. We going? Yes, we're going. I'd love to take that question. Fully integrated, fully electric, and very, very cheap. That's my vision for them. Australia is a fantastic country for a carbon-constrained future, which we're all heading to. You've seen the news. You've seen in Sydney where you're going to have some floods here tomorrow. We have to do these things. Australia has virtually unlimited solar energy. We can store that in batteries or off-river pumped hydro. There's 4,000 sites in Australia for, ready to go for pumped hydro battery, effectively batteries like the Snowy 2, but not so big. We can run these things up and down very, very cheap. They'll be automated by then. Won't even need to pay the driver. The driver can have some time at home. So doing something else, looking after their kids. That's the way we need to go. So the future can be very, very bright. Immediate future, um, battery trains, they're running in Germany now. You don't need to put all those heavy, fancy wires in and they get in the Sorry, way. Paul, your time is up. Thank you. So just to remind everyone, we've got one minute to ask a question, one minute to respond, and we can obviously ask several questions. Who would like to go next? Bryony, thank you. Thanks for the question, Robert. Look, the Frankston to Baxter rail extension, coming back to that as stage one of ultimately uh, revolutionising the Mornington Peninsula's public transport network, um, the, the Labor candidate for Hastings and uh, current councillor for Watson doesn't appear to be across the detail of what that is, but it is a dedicated train station in Langwarren for Langwarren residents and for also for Karingal residents so that they don't have to compete for parking with Frankston. Uh, it may not um, be commonly spoken about, but we cannot improve the Mornington Peninsula's bus network without relocating the interchange out of Frankston CBD because it's too heavily clogged. So what this will do in addition to providing parking for Mornington Peninsula uh, train uh, commuters at Baxter Station, as well as Baxter residents, is relocate a transit interchange so that we can run direct and reliable bus services. Now that's before we get to uh, extending the line ultimately through to Stony Point, and I know it counts advocacy for that to happen in Hastings. I speak with people every day who have identified that that is a need for me. Thank you, Bryony. Paul McCurio. Um, good question. Um, I'm going to take it on notice <laughs> because, uh, you know, I'm just thinking about short term at the moment, uh, which might be a little bit short sighted. But the fact is we need to fix, we need to fix now. And uh, certainly I, I think trying to find a fix with some focus on the future is obviously really, really important. But, um, you know, kids can't get to school, people can't come into work, so we need to get things moving now. So that's where my focus is. Um, I like what uh, Paul said. I'm not allowed to say what Paul said that goes. But I also think hydrogen's going to play a big part. And that'll be... I mean, that's a technology that's sort of emerging. Uh, and, you know, I don't fully understand it, and, and you know, but it's, it's something that's going to come around. So, it, you know, in 2015, what does the peninsula look like? What other technology, technologies do we have? But we, I think the point too is, and thank you for the question, because we need to start thinking about it. So I've always enjoyed talking with you when we have, and you've just sort of prodded me to, to think a little bit harder about that stuff, so thank you. Perfect timing, Paul. Thank you, Robert, for your question. Next question. Uh, we've had the gentleman on the fourth row, I think. Just Oh, the one behind him. That's all right. We'll come to you next, sir. Yeah, my name's Fred Crump. Now, I, I could see you a good lot because I was involved in 2005 
getting better public transport, and I could go on, and I went to five meetings and one in the city with the Public Transport Users Association. We was going to, and just the way I look at it, over the last 17 years or whatever, we've got a lot of goners. They're going to do this, they're going to do that, and they're going to do the other. Now, if they've got a railway line to Perth, and they've been talking about it for 40 years to get one to Tullamarine, why are they still dibbling and dabbling? Thanks for your question. Who would like to take that one first? Thank you. Brian? Uh, thanks for the question, Fred. I know how passionate you are about public transport and we've chatted in Hastings, and I think rightly so. I mean, it certainly hasn't changed the roots on the peninsula since I was a kid, uh, you know, since my mum's generation was a kid. Hello, mum. Um, but ultimately, uh, Labor's been in power in Victoria for 19 of the past 21 years. Uh, if we were going to see change, we would have seen it by now. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, the current government has had absolutely every opportunity to invest in improving our public transport network and has done very little. Um, the current councillor has have had every opportunity to uh, make significant improvements in Watson Ward and to my knowledge um, hasn't necessarily driven and delivered anything specific. And I sit here as the only candidate in this room that has a specific election commitment to improve significantly through up to a billion dollars of investment public transport for the Hastings electorate and ultimately for the entire Mornington Peninsula. So I'm a goner now, but if I get elected, I'll be a doer. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Brani. Who would like to take it now? Um, thank you, Fred. All I can really say is, you, you know, you've said for the last 16, 17 years nothing really has been done. I agree. Uh, I only go back to what I said. It's time to make a change and it's time to have a voice at the table. And that's up to the community to decide whose voice they want there. And uh, totally up to you. My commitment is to make change. Thank you, Paul McCurry. Paul Saunders. Lots of fun with microphones. Um, make a change. They've both been here for years. Try something fresh. Try the greens. Thank you, Paul. Um, I think we can probably say the same answer to every question, so maybe try to be a little bit more specific if we can. Uh, so, anyone else? Sorry, we had uh, the gentleman in the fourth row. And if you can just say your first name and then your question, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, my, my name is Noel Pullen. My question is to the Liberal Party candidate. In 1981, the Hamer Liberal government closed the line, the Stony Point line. In 1984, the Kane Labor government reinstated the line. Jeff Kennett wanted to close the line again, but only because of community opposition, he was stopped. And of course, Malcolm Turnbull came down and made the promise about electrifying the line to, to Baxter. How, how can we believe, because of those broken promises, anything that the Liberal Party says in relation to the Stony Point line? Um, just before you start, Bryony, I will say any question I'll put to all candidates, they don't have to answer if they don't want to, but I will give everyone the opportunity, but I'll start with you, Bryony. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you, Noel. Um, look, I'm absolutely committed to the Stony Point diesel service. Um, in its current form, Stage 1, Frankston to Baxter to electrify the line would still see continued operations between Stony Point and Baxter. It would enable an uplift of that service. Uh, you know, I can't speak for former governments any more than I can speak for the current one, but I know that the current government is deeply invested in improving our public transport system on the Mornington Peninsula, uh, the current opposition, under, unlike the current government, that is. However... Um, I, I am deeply committed to the Stony Point diesel service because I've used it um, and I have dear friends who rely upon it for transport. They don't necessarily have two cars in their family and they use the Stony Point diesel service to get to work. Um, so if I'm the Liberal candidate for Hastings and elected in November, there's no way I'm going to let them close it down. Indeed, we're only going to improve that service. Thank you, Bryony. Paul Saunders. Thank you. Um, I've said my bit, haven't I? Really try something different. Our two par we, there aren't two parties in a democracy, in a representative democracy. There are people who stand up in a local area and say, I think I can represent you for what you want. Unfortunately, we've evolved into a two-party system, which is a very comfortable duopoly. It's a little like uh, Coles and Woolies. We need to shake it up. And there are now independents, there are the Greens, and the more different voices, as Paul said, voices at the table, but they need to be different voices. Same thing, 
will have the same results. One statistic I love quoting, Germany, which is, I think you'll, believe, you'll agree, is a very successful country. It doesn't have anything like the resources we have left because they've used them. It's fourth, I think, currently in performance by a country. It's had one party majority government since 1945. It's a representative democracy. All sorts of different voices coming together to get good ideas for their local community. Thank you, Paul. And Paul McCurry, did you wish to? No? OK, do I have another question? I'll let Savannah go down the second row here. Thank you. Uh, my name is well, my name's Rob Clark. I live in Somerville. Um, I've lived there for 50 years. I've ridden all the trains since the ones that never used to break down and the ones that now do break down. <sighs> having loops, having increased services are wonderful. But I really wonder how many people have sat in Somerville when a train goes through. Somerville can be backed up hundreds and hundreds of yards either side of the roundabout because the, the, the boom gates come down when the train's at the station so we all have to wait. And then some rat bag will then block the roundabout and no one gets through. Now, if, if, you, if you double the frequency of the trains, you're just going to turn uh, some of them into, into a, a car park. The, the real issue is stop worrying about going to Melbourne. We, we should be worried about staying here. G give me another couple of minutes. Sorry, Robert. I, Sorry, we have to cut All off right. for one minute, but I All think right. they understand the gist good, of the good, comment. Good. We want to stay here. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Who would like to take that one first? Paul McCurry. Um, thank you for the question. <clears throat> uh, I'm sure all of us have been stuck there, without a doubt, and I'm sure all of us have been stuck at the different um, boom gates when they're not op operating properly. Um, that happened to me today, and um, it's it's very painful. As I mentioned earlier, I think one of the things with the Somerville. Uh, site is that roundabout is pretty awkward and as I said there is money in the 21-22 budget um, that Labor are going to be looking at that roundabout and one hopes <laughs> that it has been like that but we now have money things. in the budget so that we can actually look at how we can um, address that issue and I think not so much the issue is not so much about the the uh, the crossing there, but I think it's more the roundabout. And if we can alleviate that issue, then um, having a half-hour service to get to Melbourne, to get to work, to get to the theatre, for people to come down here and, and work, see family and friends, is a, a, a fantastic uh, opportunity for the community. Good timing. Who would like to go next? Okay, last but I... Paul Saunders. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. I'm surprised that roundabout's legal. It's a mess. And I think it's the roundabout, as probably Paul suggested there, that needs changing. I like the idea of us travelling less, and I do like the, uh, the technologies we're now using. We can stay at home more, but when we do travel, we need to do it very efficiently, and buses and trains are so much more fuel efficient and cheaper to run than private cars, especially as petrol and diesel either becomes unusable because of the carbon pollution or runs out. They are fossil fuels, not getting any new ones. So I think we have to, do have to change the way we live and perhaps we can all stay at home a little bit more. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And Bryony. It's a great question, Rob. And I talk to people in Somerville uh, most days about this, be it the local traders who are cut off by that intersection from the other side of Somerville and see less foot traffic than their neighbours or local residents, particularly around school pickup time and, you know, what I call tradie o'clock, being married to one. Um, you know, racing through the intersection, it's gridlocked, which is ridiculous for, you know, a regional township. Um, however, one day, um, which will happen under a Liberal government in Victoria, if we can duplicate and electrify uh, the Stony Point line right the way through, I'd love to be able to see an expert-led solution to that, which could involve indeed taking the line under the road. Um, of course, it's unfeasible now, uh, but we can't increase service frequency without addressing the Somerville Double Roundabout, which is a big issue for our community. Now, I haven't seen any meaningful um, investment at a state level to that. It's certainly beyond the scope of Council to do that within limited resources, although I understand there's been uh, discussion about it for many, many years, and indeed the, the Somerville to Baxter bike path, um, you know, I hope that Council is working with the community to identify solutions. Thanks, Bryony. 
Okay, that concludes that question. Thank you, Rob. Uh, we've got one over here on the left. Oh, one down the end. Okay, so they're going to beat me to it. You can just tell me where you are. So name and question, please. That working? Oh, yes, there we are. <laughs> Elizabeth Walcock. Um, my question is to all the candidates. Uh, the public service, um, sorry, public transport system established a zone two in 1982 for the outer suburbs and it finishes at Frankston. Um, and seeing as the Mornington Peninsula is now metropolitan, we should be extending that zone two out to the whole of the peninsula. And by doing this, it will establish uh, cheaper fares. Uh, can each of the candidates please tell me what you will do um, to bring this to fruition? Thank you, Elizabeth. And just for those that tuned in a bit late, if, the ca if uh, another candidate's in the audience asking a question, if you can just introduce yourself and where you're running. And so Elizabeth is an independent for Nepean. That'd be great, just so everyone knows for context. Who would like to take that one first? Brian? Sure. Thank you. Uh, lovely question, Lizzie. So if, effectively, um, the Wadditch Peninsula was classified as part of metropolitan Melbourne around about the same time, within a four-year period of that decision to make us part of Zone 2. Um, so, I mean, I am a staunch advocate for regional designation for the peninsula, which is a separate discussion. However, um, under a Victorian Liberal government, we will uh, not only halve V-line fares, but also um, make public transport in Zone 2 $2 from Hastings right to uh, Melbourne uh, and right across Zone 2 and Zone 1. So that is a commitment that we actually came out with uh, this week, I believe. So that's something that if we're elected under a Guy government come November, we'll be able to deliver $2. Uh, that's certainly cheaper than your current $9.20 fare. Thank you, Brownie. Who would like to go next? Paul Saunders. Well, yeah, thank you. Um, great idea. Free public transport. That would be a nice one. And it's perfectly possible. If we change the contracting arrangements with the profit-making companies that are doing very well out of us, it can all be a very, very, very much cheaper. Thank you. Thank you, Paul Saunders. Paul McCurry. Um, well, we're Metro. So um, I wouldn't support um, changing that or changing the fares. 30% um, of the total price of uh, fares goes to upkeep and maintenance. If we change the fare to two dollars, that's I think um, a discount of eighty percent. So we will be discounting, or we'll have eighty percent less money to maintain our tracks and our trains and our buses. So that doesn't make sense to me. Thank you, Paul, and thanks, Elizabeth, for the question. Thank you. Um, my name is Anita. I'm actually a council officer working with the economic development team. And you, as you can imagine, we hear a lot from businesses about the problems with public transport and transport in general. What's interested me about the candidates tonight is that you're relying very much on traditional solutions. So you're relying on government funding, you're relying on trains, and you're relying on buses. And sure, they're absolutely great ideas. But what are some of the alternative solutions that you might be able to come up with that will actually help people get around the peninsula, particularly workers, particularly um, students and particularly visitors? Not along those traditional lines. We know that there's lots of townships that aren't connected. Maybe I can get your ideas about that. Thank you, Anita. Paul McHugh. Um one of the things that um, I've, I've spoken about of, uh, often is, uh, you know, uh, bike paths on our roads, um, shared pathways. Uh, just, I guess, over the last few years, this new invention called battery scooters, electric scooters, electric bikes, electric skateboards have come around. And if we have better um, pathways and if we're building bike paths on, on our roads, that is going to connect our townships. And we, we are able to actually come from Frankston, in fact, I guess, on an electric scooter or an electric bike and come to Hastings or catch the train down to Hastings and then take our electric bike and scooter somewhere else. So, you know, no, we're never going to get up to Melbourne on, on the, our small electric devices, but certainly being able to connect our townships um, and connect people to uh, their office, their work, their schools, then I think uh, uh, and it's actually happening now. Thank you, Paul. Sure. 
Crony. Thank you. Look, beyond Jetson-styled air vehicles, um, I think we could perhaps get back to basics with better cycling infrastructure. I mean, I acknowledge the incredible work of Council, uh, Rotary, Peninsula Safe Links in advocating for better investment here. I know some of Water Baxter is already fully funded. That was fully funded by uh, the former Liberal uh, Federal Government and Greg Hunt is the member, um, and then also the former councillor who led that advocacy, uh, Julie Watson in what uh, Julie Morris rather in Watson Ward, also a Liberal, um, and then of course overseen by the current council. Um, so that stage one is funded. I I'd love to see stage two, which my understanding involves bitten through to Balnarring, um, and I hope that, you know, in a Liberal government, we'd be able to look at those solutions once stage one is delivered, ultimately to realise this vision, which there seems to be an enormous amount of community support for across all levels of government, for a bike trail using existing infrastructure, filling in the missing links to make transport more accessible right around the peninsula. Paul. I'm struggling with the Jetson idea. Um. <laughs> Air, air method. Um, I think if we can walk and cycle locally to work and to activities, then that has to be a good thing. So the livable townships with development tightly constrained within the urban growth boundary so that we have activity to do there. I'm currently working from home, which is marvellous. I no longer have to sit in my car or cry because I can't catch a train. So. Things are changing and we can do that. Whether there's work we can do to encourage small, relevant business locally so people don't have to travel, that would seem to me to be some sort of answer to your question. I think we'll have buses and trains. I'd hope we would have an awful lot fewer cars, especially in the summer, where we, when we can't park them and get through them. But I think buses and trains will be part of the picture but certainly f developing ways we can live locally and enjoy life locally. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Next question. Hi, I'm Lucas. I'm just a local university student. This is directed towards a Liberal candidate. In 1999, the then candidate Liberal government chose to sell and privatise public transport in Victoria. In 2013, when Liberals were in government again, they raised PT fares by over 7%. And in August of this year, Matthew Guy stated that we should be investing in health and not rail. Given the Liberal Party's track record regarding public transport, why should we believe you they all of a sudden care about public transport and not just a promise to get personally elected? In response, uh, I think it's past time that we blamed a 90s Kennett government for today's problems. Labor's been in power for... 19 of the past 21 years, so I think there's an even score on certainly both sides. However, um, having, I think, been the only candidate who spent my entire life in the electorate, I can empathise quite deeply uh, with the public transport woes of the Mornington Peninsula. Um, so, under a Guy government, uh, we're not increasing public transport fares. I think I've already spoken to the fact that we'll slash them $2 uh, to get from here to Melbourne one way. Um, and that's something that we're committed to investing in because we understand the cost of living pressures are biting everyone and public transport should be available to everyone. Um, and I think that's why we're here in this room to talk about the need for that sort of accessibility. Uh, so look, we're committed to funding Frankston to Baxter Rail, nearly a billion dollars worth of investment in that. Uh, we're not committed uh, to $120 billion for a rail line to nowhere between Cheltenham and Box Hill. Um, so that's a very different project and interestingly in, in key Labor seats. Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, can I just ask the audience, don't clap during the speech if that's okay, just so everyone can hear it, including our uh, watchers online. So go, go nuts afterwards, but not during, thanks. Paul Saunders. I think history is very important. We should look at wh what has happened and why it's happened and who has carried it out. Um, that's, that's an essential part of, mo of human life. Look back, see what we've, what's happened, what we can learn from it, and I would like to hope improve on it. So I think it is very relevant that a particular government of a particular strain um, privatise the systems. It happened in my country as well, and the train systems in certain parts don't work at all. So let's look back, and obviously we don't need to blame the people in the room about what is, going, is happening now, but we need to understand that those major changes to how public services are provided has impacted us all. So we may need to look at different ways of providing those public services. Markets fail. The market system for buses on the Mornington Peninsula doesn't work for us. 
If it did, well, there'd be plenty of buses. So governments have to step in, governments have to fix those broken markets, thank you, do Paul. things differently. Thank you, Paul. Paul McCurry? No, thank you. Next question. So the mic is doing its own rounds. Thanks, Randall. Thank you. Um, this is mainly directed towards Paul, but I'm sure the other two candidates will have, uh, uh, Paul Mercurio, sorry, um, will have some commentary on this. Um, I was listening to your earlier remarks regarding having a seat to the table for helping fund public transport on the electorate. You gave the example about the member for Nepean, that after he won the state government funded the new bus lines. Are you admitting that unless the member is from the Labor Party, whether Liberal, Green or Independent, that the state government won't look at that seat for public transport funding and will be neglected? Sorry, can you just say that once more? Just the last part? I didn't... Uh, I'll... I'll you paraphrase? I'm happy to um, paraphrase if you want. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the question, and correct me if I'm wrong, was basically will the Labor government even power not look at this seat unless there's a Labor MP? Is that right? Yep. I, I can't speak for the Labor Party. Um, I'm a candidate. I'm a candidate and I'm here to talk about my thoughts on what I can or would like to work to achieve within this community. Uh, once I'm an MP, then I will have, I will be at the table and I will be having discussions and I will be informed uh, and I will abs you know, know what, what, I will know, um, or I will have all the information. As a candidate, I don't. So, you know, I, all I can say is we need a change and Paul makes a, a good point that, you know, maybe try the Greens, but I think it, we can also make a change within the party. So I will be wanting to go in if I get elected and I will be a different voice in there. That's my, that's my determination and uh, I will look at succeeding in that, I hope. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. And as with the other questions, even though they're direct questions, you're welcome to respond. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Look, I, I do note, um, you know, sandwiched in between the pools, Paul squared perhaps, um, you know, we've got uh, Paul who bravely stood as the candidate, uh, the Greens candidate in the Peen in 2018 and helped Chris Grain, Brain get elected, as Paul Mercurio has alluded to. Um, now, according to a recent interview on RPPFM, you know, a similar effect may be possible here in Hastings, by which you could stand here, give preferences to the Labor Party. And so I, I think um, Mercurio's uh, comment is quite interesting in the sense that if you want something different, try Green, but get Labor. And what we know about Labor is that they don't actually invest here on the Mornington Peninsula in a significant way, or we wouldn't be having this debate tonight about the need for investment in our public transport system. Thank you, Brian. Paul? Um, preferences are, are a matter for the voter. We may recommend how you vote, but in this wonderful democratic system, you preference who you like. So that's your choice. Um, I would repeat once again that both major parties have not achieved much for this community on this issue, and it's a recurrent issue. So shake it up a bit. Try something different. Thank you, Paul. While I know everyone's pretty keen to get into the politics, if we can keep it to transport, both in questions and responses, that would be good. I'll let that one go, but I'll jump in next time if we get off track. So transport questions only, please. Next question. Um, hello. Um, I'm Rod Smith. I'm from Tyab. I'm a fairly new kid on the block. I've only been there 22 years, and before that I was 13 years at Lang Warren. Um, so my question is to all candidates. Um, it's actually, I guess, a double-barrelled question, but I'm a big believer that to make things work, you need to research them. You need to actually know that there is a need for a start and you need to know to what level that need is. So the first question, and I'll ask both questions because I don't think they're that long, but um, the first question is, have all parties or what parties have actually done research and what have the results been in regarding to the Stony Point line? And secondly, one line that personally I feel should be reopened almost immediately, even if it's with diesel, is the Mornington line, which would then allow us to have a cross-country bus very easily and make a nice loop, if you like, between um, either Hastings and Mornington or Tyab. Thank you. Thank you. Who would like to take that one first? Paul Saunders. Thank you, Paul. Um, I've done a little bit of research and I'm relying very much on Robert and the Council's research. I have a full-time job. I don't have what others in the room have. Um, 
the council surveys seem to suggest there is a need that the, the, uh, the community on the peninsula would like better public transport. And I think it's um, fantastic that they're putting on this forum and the transport forum are putting this on so that can be aired, the candidates can hear about it, and hopefully we can improve on those things. Thank you, Paul. A line to Mornington would be lovely. Shame they got rid of the station right in town. But they've laid, they have reserved a space for a station, which would be good. Thanks, Paul. Paul McEwry. Um Yes, I'd love to see the Mornington line opened also. I think uh, it would be terrific, you know, just for tourism, people coming down from the city, being able to jump on and, and take that line in, into Mornington would be terrific. Uh, as far as research on the Stony Point line, I, walking through the community, talking to people and what they need and what they want and how um, they're being let down by not having a better transport system and a, and a more... Um, a better timetable on the uh, Stony Point and buses as well. But um, I have spoken to a variety of people that have done the research. I, I have read research um, about it. And, but, and there's all this talk about return on investment and, you know, all this sort of stuff. But the fact is the line isn't being used by the public as much as it could be at the moment because it's unreliable and because it's every two hours. And I believe, and the, what people tell me in the community and from what I've, what I've spoken to people... Um, if we had a better service, people would use it. And that's what they want. Thank you, Paul. Ronnie. Uh, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, in terms of the Sterney Point line, it's something that this community is, has had access to for a long time. Paul's indicated it's underutilised due to poor service frequency. Absolutely. Um, that is the case. My late auntie Dorothy lived in Bitten. She never drove. Um, she passed away last year, but she uh, was known to catch the Bitten train to Hastings, and when it didn't come, um, she had to wait two hours to the next one, and I just wish she would have called us so that we could have drove her there, um, but she was very busy with grandkids. Um, and so it's a problem that hasn't been resolved, and I think there's been a lot of opportunity for research. It's time to get on and deliver it. Um, that's really important, not just for people in Tyab who'd be able to drive to their closest train station um, in Tyab if they have that opportunity or walk or cycle, um, but also for Langwaron residents instead of having to compete uh, for Frankston and the wider Mornington Peninsula for car parking in Frankston Station, which I think we all know is, is very difficult and people often drive further up the line. So part of it is community feedback, part of it is multiple expert opinion. Thank you, Bryony. Next question. Uh, my name's James. Um, I'm from Somerville. Uh, my wife and I, we've been volunteers for a company called PTA um, that um, drive uh, people around, normally older people. I haven't heard much about cross-peninsula transport. Most of it's been talking about the Stony Point line. But uh, we do a lot of driving of people from um, Hastings, Somerville, over to Mornington. And I think... Uh, from my understanding, there has been a trial of buses from Mornington to uh, Hastings, and I don't know if it worked or not, but maybe we need to think a little bit more of door-to-door -door for because some of these people we take would not be able to get on buses. So, so Or supporting the company that is actually doing some of this work cross-peninsula. Thank you for the question. Paul Saunders. I'd like to say thank you you're stepping up where governments fail. And that's what we we need to try and fix. It's not easy, um, but various different things. There are buses that people with limited mobility can get on. They have them in the city, they drop the nose. We don't have them here, because we're too far away or something. Um, and there's also all sorts of other possibilities, you know, the dial-a-ride dial type schemes that are going on. Some of the best public transport systems are very carefully planned very carefully managed and integrated, as our Department of Transport is meant to be doing according to their mandate, um, that link all that together. And I don't think that's been what we've been delivered as the community. And I spoke about my reasons why I felt that was the case earlier. So, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Ronnie. I'll echo uh, Paul Saunders' thanks. It's an amazing you know, contribution that you're making. And I know there's a real need, particularly in this community of Hastings, which we're all seeking to represent. Um, I should have said, you know, stage one, Frankston to Baxter. 
that's part of the vision of finally realising, uh, you know, Baxter through to Mornington, and I acknowledge the work of Chris Cruther in this room, is a very strong advocate for that project, so you have a sympathiser, Robert, um, and also then one day through to Stony Point on the other side, sort of the upside-down smiley face, as it were, of rail connecting the peninsula. But I'm also fighting very strongly for a bus service to take Hastings people through to Mornington uh, and also Hastings to Rosebud. So, uh, you know, that's part of the way to delivering that uh, cross-peninsula accessibility, which we've talked about for a long time. I believe the trial perhaps was underutilised because it was a trial, it wasn't something that was going to be ongoing. Perhaps there may have been some issues with people knowing about it, but I, this is something that is suggested to me most days and I couldn't agree more. It's thoroughly needed. And on the other side of things, um, we know that you know cars have to be roadworthy, but it should be the other way around. Roads should also be car worthy. And under a Liberal government, we'll make sure that happens. Thank you, Bronnie. Um, you guys do great work, the Peninsula Transport Assist, and, and thank you uh, for that work. Um, there's a lot we're not sort of talking about tonight, and I, you know, we're, I guess we're just trying to get some uh, current points out pretty quickly, but we're not talking about disability access. We haven't been talking about that tonight. We're not talking about how we can uh, get pe uh, buses with uh, bike um, racks so people can actually put their bike on the, the rack, and we're not talking enough perhaps about the um, cross bus um, system and yes there was a uh, a study and there was a trial and you know th the comment that came out was it wasn't very well utilized um, but it was just a trial uh, and people a didn't know about it enough and b there probably wasn't enough buses so i'd go back to the question about do we really need half our services on the train do we really need you know uh, more intense and more um, usable bus services yes we absolutely do uh, and we need to work towards that. And the, we need to build it and they will come. We can't just trial something and when it doesn't work, stop it. Thanks, thanks, Paul. And great question again. Next question. Hi, I'm Kate Loudner. I'm running as the Community Independent in Mornington. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge the work that Robert Whitehill's done on this. He's spent 12 years uh, putting together a public transport manifesto. So Robert's running as the Independent and we've had some long chats. Um, so I guess I, it's a double-barrelled question. It's about community consultation and long-term thinking. So I think all of the panellists agree that cross-peninsula buses are required and um, I certainly agree with that too. And in the short term, I agree with Robert and the Pauls about um, the rail loops as being the most short-term cost-effective way of going forwards. In the long term, with regards to the rail, um, my understanding is the Baxter community were consulted and um, weren't happy to be the end of the line for the duplification and electrification of the line. Um, so how are the, what are you hearing on the ground and how are you addressing the community concerns? And also with um, the planning scheme that the council recently brought up um, through to 2036, there's gonna be th uh, four hubs of, of growth um, during that time. Sorry, and... Um, Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> Who would like to take that first? Bryony? Um, thanks for the question, Kate. So I've spoken with the Baxter community extensively throughout this year. I've been on the ground campaigning since January, uh, including Brat Pack. So they're, you know, hilariously named Brat Pack, Baxter Residents and Ratepayers uh, Association or Traders Progress Action Committee, I forget. Um, but this is their central advocacy point. Uh, you know, we're long past the time where the Frankston to Baxter rail extension should have been delivered. It's never meant to be the end of the line. Um, this is about taking metropolitan uh, standard uh, rail service right through uh, to the, you know, Stony Point line across to Mornington uh, potentially one day as well. Um, so I've consulted with the Baxter community directly, also through BATPAC. Uh, they're incredibly supportive of, of the project. Thank you, Brownie. Paul Saunders. Um, I don't have the luxury of going out and talking to many people, as I said earlier. I have a full-time job, um, not one of, not one of these um, well-funded parties. But community consultation, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's on the VEC, you can look it up. Um, no, I didn't say you're paid. <laughs> sorry, we're getting into the politics. Um, community consultation is essential, it's what we're doing tonight. And so on any proposed changes, it's the role of government is to try to provide what the community wants, not what their backers want or other powerful people. So, yes, Kate, if, if Baxter doesn't want it, then Baxter needs to be listened to. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, just another reminder to members of the audience, please don't speak when the candidates are responding. Just uh, allow them the respect of 
giving a full answer before you have any response. Paul McCure. Um I haven't heard a lot from the Baxter community, but what I have heard is that they're not happy. Nice and succinct. Thank you, Paul. Next question. Yep. Um, Down the back. Hi, I'm Finn. My question is mainly directed to the Liberal candidate. Liberals have been held, holding the seat of Hastings since 2006, and it seems like transport has continually been an issue during that time. When the Liberals held both Hastings and the state government in 2010, what did the Liberal Party achieve uh, in progress for public transport during that time? Thank you, Finn. Uh, look, as you've indicated, the Liberals have held the seat since 2006 under the current retiring Member of Parliament, Neil Burgess. Uh, he has had the unfortunate position of being in opposition for uh, three out of those terms. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to, through the, the Napthine uh, government, uh, deliver you know, the investment that we need here on the Mornington Peninsula, and I can't speak for former governments. Um, I was probably your age when they were last in government here, and it didn't progress under them, but it certainly hasn't progressed at one iota under the current Andrews Labor government, and they've made it very clear that they will not invest in the Baxter Rail Extension. Um, and indeed, the you know, independent um, uh, Infrastructure Victoria Agency's solution to Mornington Peninsula's public transport woes was eco-friendly buses along current routes. Thank you, Bryony. Paul Saunders. Thanks, Finn. You made my case beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. Next question, thanks. Um, thank you. Hi, I'm Harry Sinclair. I'm the Greens candidate for the seat of Mornington. Um, one of the big problems with people having to rely on cars so much here on the peninsula is the environmental impact that has. Um, I know we've heard a fair bit about electrifying the, the lines, and I appreciate that because obviously diesel is very polluting. Um, but can the candidates commit to where we do have new electric forms of transport, it is going to be... Um, renewables given the current climate crisis and I agree with Paul Mercurio that hydrogen is going to be part of that solution but can the candidates confirm when we do have when we do have hydrogen that it's going to be green hydrogen Paul Saunders obviously <laughs> sorry but I have to say that the Greens are the party that have for 30 years we're only 30 years old not a hundred and well, forever, at 125, actually. <laughs> the Greens Party. Um, we are aware that climate change is happening, and that is being caused very, very sadly by the last 200 years of burning fossil fuels. We'll just keep this question to transport and the technology to drive transport, if we can, Paul. So Thanks. then we will use hydrogen and batteries. Thank you. Obviously. Paul McCurry. Um Certainly, you know, the commitment to clean energy is 100% and uh, to green hydrogen would be 100%. Thank you, Paul. Brownie. Yeah, look, with the background in environmental science, I did an honours degree at Deakin, first year on the bus, next three years by car. Um, I'm really thrilled that the Victorian Liberals have identified not only um, the need for emissions reductions and doing our bit uh, in the climate change uh, debate that is raging and our responsibilities to our international partners. Um, from Victoria, we keep it in perspective. And so the Victorian Liberal opposition has committed $1 billion to hydrogen research and development um, in addition to a local gas guarantee. And I, I note there is one hydrogen entrepreneur in the room at least, uh, Tom Camp Senior at the back. Um, so we are thoroughly committed to driving a market-led solution and we're backing that market to find those solutions. Thank you, Bryony, and thanks for the question, Harry. Next question. Thank you. Um, Councillor Service Ward. Um, as the Councillor for Service Ward, I attend the uh, Metropolitan Transport Forums. Um, and I was shocked in the very first uh, meeting that I attended that um, the map that showed public transport stopped at Frankston. So when I asked the question, where is the Mornington Peninsula, it, it was dead silence. So my question is, um, I don't mind which of you get elected, but I would love a guarantee 
that you get us on that map. Because until we're on that map, we're not going to get funding or be recognised. Thank you. So I'll take that as a question. Will you get us on the map? <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Drawing it now. Well, absolutely. And, and Councillor Dixon, you've touched on a really important issue, which is this idea that we are metropolitan in classification, regional in nature. Um, we don't necessarily get access to metropolitan funding. We know that there is more per capita funding in regional Victoria. Uh, and so whilst we have regional issues, um, we are only accessible to funding to solve the sorts of problems we don't experience. I, sorry, Brian, I don't want to go into the metro regional, just transport. Will you get us on a map? I'll get us on the map. Whether it's metro or regional, I prefer it to be regional. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're almost on time, but it will take a couple more questions because I think it's great how much energy we've got from the audience. I had some pre-prepared in case there was no hands, but it's amazing how many hands are popping up. So we'll take a few more. Thank you. I don't know where the mic is at the moment. Hi, I'm Kerry McCafferty, uh, councillor for Sea Winds Ward. Um, as a part of my role, I sit on the Disability Advisory Committee um, and I'm very pleased to hear of the transport uh, dis the discussion. I want to acknowledge that there is a significant number of residents in our municipality who live with a disability and the lack of transport infrastructure for them is an economic disaster. Um, there is obviously uh, greater challenges in gaining employment, but actually at being able to attend employment, um, it's significantly hampered by that. So I would like to ask the candidates, all of you, uh, if there was any sort of plan for a more immediate solution that specifically addresses the difficulties faced by members of our community living with disability. Great question. Thank you, Kerry. Paul Saunders. Thanks, Kerry. Um, the role, I'll go back to my favourite line, the role of government is actually to provide for the community. So if there's a need there, whoever of us are elected should be addressing it. It hasn't been addressed, it needs to be addressed. Thank you, Paul. Brani? Well, absolutely, it's a very key need. Um, and I think, you know, as we're becoming more aware in our own uh, contemporary society of these needs that have been needs for a very long time, such as basic things, disability access, so that you can get onto a train, you can get to a bus. Um, I'd love to be able to see, uh, you know, that built into contracting systems. When we're commissioning new uh, trams and, and trains and buses, instead of going with the same old, same old, have that built in. I'm not aware of specific policy around that, but I support it in principle, Councillor McCafferty. Thank you, Bryony. Oh. Um, thanks, Kerry, and I, I kind of don't want to just give that lip service and answer, you know, to that answer or to your question. Um, obviously, you know, I worked on the, I was on the Disability Access Committee, and um, it really opened my eyes to how non-inclusive we are, not as governments, as local governments, and also as people. You know, we we, we don't think about it enough. We don't do enough about it. And all I can say, really, Kerry, to, to answer that question is, in the same way that it's been implemented at council, that every time anything comes to council as a, in a discussion or in a plan, straight away, the, you know, we we talk about disability inclusiveness, so that and it trickles down. And I will take that um, to the table if I get elected, and I'll work really hard to make that change. I mean, it, someone just texted me recently and they have um, a disability um, and they catch the train, which is great, but there's no toilets anywhere. And they've had massive accidents because of that. Thank we need Paul. to do more. Thanks, Paul. One more question. You can fight over this one. Sorry, there's a mic there. If someone can get it. Thank you. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm Don. Uh, right now. Okay. Uh, I'm Don Rees. I'm a current uh, board member of Pension Transport Assistance, as mentioned by one of our volunteer drivers there as well. But uh, we, we as an organisation, have been addressing needs uh, across the peninsula and across the city of Frankston. And of course, it's across peninsula issue is a, a real live one for all of us. But public transport, we do our bit, we do the last mile and we do all the other bits and pieces which are available and we'll keep doing it while we can survive. But 
I'm listening to the candidates as a, as a trained economic historian. I'm asking, where is the money coming from? Because we can have all the right ideas, but in actual fact, I'm interested from conditional transport point of view is how can we talk about the viable uh, structural issues when heavy infrastructure is required for rail and buses and so how do we how are you going to aim to improve a government's performance in delivering those costly projects thank you who would like to take that final question first Bryony, and then i'll go to you paul thank you don through responsible management of projects under the current andrews labor government we have seen innumerable cost and time blowouts that has cost victorian taxpayers payers and likely my grandchildren billions of dollars worth of debt to repay Currently in Victoria, we have more debt than Queensland, Tasmania and New South Wales combined. And that's just our state debt. Um, so we will, under a Matt Guy Liberal government, deliver projects responsibly. We will stick to timeframes. We will stick to budgets and whilst not raising taxes. Thank you, Bryony. Paul Saunders. It's hard to find money, isn't it? If you remember the Greens federal campaign, we would tax the billionaires and the multinational companies. We can't do that here in the state, but we will tax the gambling industry and we will tax the property development industry and, like Bryony, we'll spend sensibly, because that's essential that we spend taxpayers' money properly. We currently subsidise, for example, Gina Reinhart, richest woman on the planet, more than she pays in taxes. There's a lot of money, Getting a bit off topic doesn't go to the right place. Thank you. Thank you. Paul McCure. Um I don't have an answer for you. You know, where is the money going to come from? I don't know. So um, we need to work at that. And uh, um, all I can really say to you is that I will, am committed to trying to find an answer. But at this stage, I don't have an answer for it. And I don't really know if anyone does. Thank you, Paul. So we'll, we'll end the questions there. We're already five minutes over time. And anyone that's watched me chair a council meeting, I hate going over. But we did get five more minutes in there. And we still have to hear the closing arguments for each candidate. So I will remind you, transport policy, what you're going to do to solve some of these problems with real solutions. So if you could give us two minutes and we'll go in reverse order. So we'll start with Paul and then uh, we'll go to the other Paul and then back to Bryony to finish up. Two minutes. Thanks, Paul. Um, well, uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for your questions. Uh, in closing, all I, all I really want to say is um, I'm here as a servant to the public and I can only do what the public asks me to do. And I can only do um, what they want me to do and how they want me to represent them. So I would say, in closing, um, I would like to have a seat at that table so I can affect change. Uh, in terms of finding out what people want, uh, my door is always open. You have my phone number, you have my email. By all means, the more people that come and talk to me, that email me, it'll give me um, a real understanding of what I can do for the community. So that's really it, but thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Paul. Just on the train. Paul Saunders, two minutes. Thank you, and once again, thank you for coming. I am delighted. Um, our democracy and our politics has been very solid in recent times, and I think that's so sad. Hard one writes your votes, use them wisely, You've heard my message. I think it's all a bit too comfortable as it's been for a long time. And the transport on the peninsula, I don't think will change until we get some different voices into parliament. So I would suggest you try something new, try something different. Thank you, Paul. Bryony, two minutes, thanks. Look, I've lived here my whole life. I've lived many of the issues that we experience day to day, including public transport. I'm thoroughly committed to driving solutions. I have a strong track record of advocacy for this place in prior roles and currently as the candidate. Um, perhaps to correct an earlier assertion, I'm not paid by the Liberal Party. I understand none of us are by our respective parties um, and every dollar we fundraise ourselves. Um, however, I have committed through my beautiful tradie husband enabling this candidate lifestyle that I do live for one year and one year only um, to have spoken with many people in this community. And so I'm confident that what I'm advocating for is broadly representative of what this community needs and wants because I've heard you say it to me this year. Um, so I'll drive solutions. You've heard about my promises. That will be delivered under a Matt Guy government. If I'm in opposition, I won't stop 
until we get those solutions because I'm as tenacious as they come and you won't find a more passionate candidate for this area. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody, that brings us to the end of the panel and the forum. Um, so I'll just make some closing remarks, but before I do, I just want to again, round of applause to all of our candidates for showing up tonight. Thank you. And also to the several candidates in the audience, I'm sorry you didn't get to have a seat at the table up here. Pardon the pun, Paul. But at least um, you, you had an opportunity to show up today and ask some questions, so thank you to you as well. Um, I guess... Uh, disability and accessible access came up at the end and one thing I did notice because I think when you are involved in these roles and as a councillor I, I'm not on the disability advisory committee but I, I'm more aware of these issues being a councillor when I walked to the bus stop I realised there's no bloody path to get there and you have to either go over a hill or onto the highway to get to the bus stop and sometimes you just wonder how on earth do we get these these things put in place who was thinking at the time when they designed this up and I was found that quite bizarre. The bus stop opposite my house, I could have easily got there uh, in any particular way, but the one that I ended up walking to because there was no bus to get me here in three hours, uh, I had to go over a huge mound. And you can imagine there's a huge uh, portion of the population that just wouldn't be able to do that. And I think um, I'm glad that point was raised and thank you to the couple of people that raised it and to the PTA for the work you do. Um, so, but I think it's a really important point. So I just wanted to mention that because that was part of my fun experience this afternoon. Um, also, to Peninsula Transport Assist, uh, the Shire uh, supports them as well, and that's a great organisation. And we didn't talk about some of those other options. We obviously spoke about the, the train line a lot, uh, bus lines uh, a little bit, but not as much as we probably could have. Cross, cross Peninsula bus being uh, the thing that would have saved me a bit of time this afternoon. But also, we've got the active transport, so more walking, more riding, and some of the other innovative ideas. Um, I guess, as part of council's role, we're here to, to advocate on behalf of the community and this, this forum was put on again with the Metropolitan Transport Forum, so thank you for your support in getting this up and running. Uh, and if, if you're interested in other seats, there's plenty more coming. I think there's another four or five in the, in the schedule, so, and there's a couple that they've already done, so if you love transport, and it sounds like some of us love it more than others, uh, you can get online and look at the conversations that have happened elsewhere. But I think, um, you know, we, we play as a council a role in advocating on, on your behalf and the candidates might not like this, but we do have a couple of shout-out things up the back of the room on the side. So take a photo, spam them, get loud, get noisy, um, because the only way this is going to change is if these guys feel the pressure. Uh, so, you know, really appreciate the questions tonight. As I said, I had a, a list prepared because sometimes you get to these forums and there's a lot of people not willing to put up their hand, but obviously I think tonight just shows how important this issue is and how passionate the community are because I didn't have to use one of those. And in fact, I, I'm guessing we could have gone on to nine o'clock. So thank you for your attendance tonight. Thank you for all your great questions. Again, thank you to the candidates and to the, those in the audience for, uh, for attending tonight and giving us your ideas. Um, I think it's just, it's so great and it's a shame we can't do more of these forums across a, a wide range of issues, but appreciate the fact that we're here tonight and talking about transport. So thank you again. And uh, finally, to wrap up, can I get a lift home, please? <laughs> no, don't I've already sorted that. But again, it's a bit of a joke, a bit of a gimmick, but it is to prove I've got a lift, it's fine. Uh, but it, it proves the point. I, I got here, it took me two hours, we've got this great forum, I can't get home now. And, you know, I've got the luxury, I can afford a car, and had I not got a bus, I would have driven here, but not everyone's in that situation. So I think it's a really important thing that we talk about because... We all know we've got people that need to move around and without that transport, they're stuck. So thank you again. Stick around for a couple of... Uh,